fixed income is mechanically impacted by changes in rates. And let me be clear, when I say rates, right now I'm referring to nominal rates, which are a combination of real interest rates and inflation. Right? Those two things come together to form nominal rates. But it is also pretty critical that we decompose those and think about what is driving some of that mechanical change in fixed income pricing. It's real rates, clearly, but it's also the inflationary component. And this is important when we start talking about asset classes that aren't fixed income. So for instance, equities or other alternatives like real estate. With equities, there's more emphasis on growth prospects than there are with just interest rates in terms of pricing. Clearly, when the price of money changes, so when interest rates change, that impacts how we think about the forward-looking earnings from stocks and stock markets around the world. Um, and the same thing for, let's say, rents from real estate. So growth has a much bigger impact on some of these other asset classes that are not fixed income than we typically see in bonds, unless you're talking about credit or high yield. The way that assets are pricing in the future direction of growth, of inflation, and from interest rates is pretty different at this point. You've already seen the mechanical step down with fixed income, although that's being somewhat offset by, by higher forward-looking yields. You've seen equity markets stumble over the last couple of months as repricing and the inflection point becomes really clear. And, and with alternatives, you've seen the same, although because of the lag with appraisal-based reporting, it takes a bit longer to understand what's going on with some of the pricing for alternatives. When it comes to inflation hedges, and this is on many, many investors' minds, right? how do I think about inflation exposure in my portfolio? Maybe how do I protect my portfolio from shocks to inflation? There's a lot of assets that do have mechanical characteristics that go along with inflation, like treasury inflation protected securities, TIPS, or linkers elsewhere in the world. Um, those have very strong connection with inflation, but so do some alternatives, specifically real estate, infrastructure, and even commodities give you access to the real economy and to what's going on with inflation. And we've seen investors shift their portfolios to take advantage of more of those asset classes that have true inflation exposure.